So in uh, the last uh, video I posted about the book, I was explaining um, my uh, motivation for um, writing uh, it with Simon and Gary. I want to think now a bit more about the process of creating what turned out to be a 452-page um, uh, book. Uh, it's a process really of lots of joy, uh, times lots of challenge and struggle and ultimately quite a lot of sadness towards the end of the process and I'd like to share some of that with you. Um, writing a book is something I'd recommend, something that builds relationships with your co-authors, it uh, builds relationships with many other people you talk to and rehearse your ideas and ask um, help, you know, be it, you know, could I have a picture to put in the book or um, can you explain a bit more about your, your work. It really is a, a living process and a relational process and I, and I think it's a very rich uh, activity. For this book I guess the ideas started back um, several years ago and I have a number of memories I'd like to share with you really. Uh, the first was I suppose two and a half years ago I was on holiday um, in the Picas de Europa, which is a beautiful part of um, northern Spain. I was up in a very, very small village up high in the mountains, and uh, I was listening to a bit of the Olympic uh, Games uh, theme music, um, sitting on a cafe, um, and just trying to sketch out the rationale and motivation and arguments that Gary and Simon and I had been talking about. And as I was doing that, it was a really hot sunny day, I had a strong espresso uh, in my hand. Uh, down the dusty street came, as far as I could see, completely uh, unherded, a, um, this was the right term, is a, a chaos of cattle. Uh, just brushing along the street, followed by some chickens, and uh, it was it was incredibly, um, almost um, stereotypically rural. I sat there, and you know, coffee in my hands, the flavour in my mouth, the sun on my face, and then this kind of dust and noise of the the cattle. Uh, that really helped a lot to to think about how um, that face-on experience of that part of the world, which is still very vivid in my mind, how does that inform uh, when we're thinking about designing for these very flat, dead, or seemingly dead, um, screens? And then uh, perhaps a, a much harder um, memory, um, and that was going um, back in February of this year, just as we were coming to the end of the book, um, Simon and I and some friends were went to Cape Town. We went there because we were attending um, Gary's uh, memorial service. So as you don't know, Gary um, uh, uh, died very suddenly at the end of last year, at a very young age, or at least at the same age as me, which I like to think of as relatively um, young. Gary, of course, had finished his um, parts of the book uh, characteristically uh, just a couple of weeks before um, he died. And if you get a chance to read the book, you'll see, uh, and if you've known Gary, uh, you'll feel his uh, sense of humour and his sense of insight throughout the book, but in particular uh, he presents some fascinating new uh, directions for understanding how mobiles can make us connect to the world in a more measured way. Anyway, um, Simon and I went back down to Cape Town and we went to the beach where Gary um, spent his last day in South Africa and we were a group of people and yeah of course it was a very moving experience and we used, I think it was this mobile phone, to take a selfie of the group of us at that spot. 
Now, the interesting thing about selfies is that they are a use of technology which is quite inclusive because as we gathered around arms around each other, just remembering Gary and using the mobile to take the picture, we were all together as part of a um, remembering performance in that, in that place. Again, quite different from um, solitary uses of technology. Kind of reminded me too of uh, an experience a bit later on in um, the CHI conference in April of this year, a uh, conference where Gary was remembered in front of several thousand people. Um, we had the keynote speaker there, Margaret Atwood, and after her talk, she went with, uh, with me and looked around a brilliant exhibition by Thad Starner. Thad was one of the technical leads on Google Glass project, and he made it with his colleagues, Clint Ziegler and others, an amazing uh, exhibition of lots of wearables through the last uh, 20 years. Anyway, Margaret Atwood went to this exhibition. She tried various devices, including Google Glass. Um, and she said something really insightful. She, she enjoyed the technology, could see its potential. But she said to Thad, there's one problem here. And Thad, you know, said, well, what's that? And she said, well, you can't take selfies with it. I could see Thad's face freeze as he pondered it. And he reacted quite quickly and said, yes, you can, yes, you can. You can take your glasses off and then you can take a selfie. But, you know, Margaret Atwood had a real insight there. Wearable computers where the camera is looking out onto the world are quite um, self-centered around the wearer. Uh, you know, they allow me to capture you. Selfies allow me to draw you into my experience through the technology. And I think that's a really important insight that we can use to um, inform other designs. Anyway, I'll leave it there. And over the next few weeks, uh, I'll be um, rambling on like this, uh, reflecting a bit more about the book, about some of its context, some examples that we have, um, to share with you that journey we made. If you want to find more out about Gary Marsden and his work, go to Google or Bing or any other search engine, type in Gary Marsden, University of Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, the university set up a scholarship um, page where they were seeking to establish in his name um, some fantastic ways of nurturing the next generation of computer scientists, interaction designers. If you're touched by uh, what Gary's done, which I'm sure you would be, then please consider making a donation to that scholarship.